Namaste students. So till now what we have covered, I hope you have revised the previous lectures. Now in the previous lectures, we started with the information system controls. Why we required controls? So I have given you that Sakit Modi videos and then there is another video I have given you. Uh, I know in the other video, a little bit sound was a problem, but uh, if you just reduce the sound, then you will able to hear it very well. Okay. So what are the different categories of controls? So objectives of control. First, second, nature of IS resources and third, audit function. First, objectives of control, preventive, detective, corrective. Second, nature of IS resources. First, environmental control. Second, physical access control. Third, logical access control. And then audit function, managerial controls and application controls. We have finished till first, environmental control, nature of IS resources in that environmental control where fire damage, power spike, water damage, pollutions and others and then we started with the next concept called physical access control in that we have already finished locks on door CFA law electronic door lock bolting law then physical identification medium pin number plastic cards and identity identity badge and then logging on utilities logging means log means record please remember this word this word is going to come again and again log means to record okay and then in that we have a two manual where which is for visitors and then electronic which is for employees okay now today we need to complete physical access control and then we'll start with logical access control i think in today's lecture we will able to complete till entire logical access control okay so physical access control will get complete first and then we'll start with logical access control okay now i told you yesterday uh, to remember all these controls, you need to understand like this. If you want to protect your resources from a manusha, then physical access control. Technical manusha, which means logical access control. And then from act of God, then environmental controls. Correct? Now, so in physical access control, we are starting with the next topic, which is the last topic of physical access control. Other means of controlling physical access. Damn simple. Generalized. Okay. I hope you have seen the videos very well google data center okay now video cameras i hope everyone knows video cameras are one of the most important part of security even you have kept in your societies in your buildings some of you have might have kept in their homes also correct now apart from this the requirement is security guards when you talk about physical access security security guard is also one of the important part of security physical security correct so you can see extra security can be provided by appointing guards added with video cameras and locked doors. Okay. Guard supplied guard supplied by external agencies should be made to sign a bond to protect the automation from loss. Now I will explain you this when the point will come bonded personal, you will find one point. Okay. But relax. What is this point means? I will explain you control visitor access company should specifically appoint one employee who will take care of all the visitors whether it's friends whether it is auditors or it is partners whenever anyone is entering into the company who are outsiders this employee will make sure that okay, he should he should means what visitor should meet the request uh, required person once the work is finished our employee should escort that visitor again back to the door okay exit entry so that is what called Controlled visitor access. A responsible employee should escort all the visitors. No visitors should allow to roam in office. Okay. Clear. Okay. Now next, bonded personal. Now here I wanted to explain you what is bonded personal. That the point which we have just recently, if you can see, guard are supplied by external agency. The security guard generally company don't appoint any person directly as a security guard. We always contact agencies security agencies and then they will provide us the security guards okay but we need to sign a bond can you see this if you see this word sign a bond the reference is here also of the next point bonded personal i'm just showing you the reference now understand if our competitors are not able to get any information from our employees, suppose our all employees are damn honest employees. They are honest with the organizations. So they are not going to supply any information to competitors. Then competitors use their mind. Then they will search some people who are allowed to enter in our organization. 
yes computer will search some people who are allowed to enter in our organization for example you know that in organizations air conditions will be their ac but their maintenance will be always outsourced all the computer hardwares but their maintenance will be outsourced so this competitors may approach some of the employees of this outsource organization understand not the organization they will not approach the organization any employee of that outsource organization and computers will tell that person okay, whenever he sh he will visit our organization our our means my organization my office you understand then get some information with the, from the organization and look the person who is entering he is not employee of the company he is also outsiders he belongs to the company to whom we have given the outsourcing contract so he might get bribe from competitors to steal some information from our office now in such scenario in such scenario it is a loss to organization correct so bonded personal means whenever we will outsource some services to other organizations outsourcing we will do we will make an exclusive contract with the outsourcing organizations listen it very carefully with outsourcing organizations that if your employee will leak our information then you will be responsible for compensation that is what called bonded personal a contract will be signed with the company that if your employees if your employee will steal any information from our company and give it to our competitors then you will be responsible okay so please underline all service contract personnel such as cleaning people should be asked to sign a bond this may not be measured to improve physical security but to a certain extent can limit the financial exposure to the uh, financial exposure of the organization okay so bond means contract remember bond means if you want you just write down bond means contract okay then dead man door yesterday last lecture which you have seen in that you have observed uh, that a person who was the chief security officer of the google remember that fat person now when he was entering into the Data, uh, that uh, data center in that uh, computer system where all the servers were there remember so first glass opened that glass door was there there was actually two doors first door got opened then he entered into the that particular uh, door he entered into that door then try to remember first door closed and after verification of that biometric remember retina biometric second door opened so guys understand in big organizations where there are very sensitive data what will be the security to that uh, the area which is more sensitive which uh, which have a sensitive information so they keep multiple doors they keep multiple doors so when you enter from the door that door will get locked and then only second door will get unlocked look at my words first door you entered now first door will get closed and only then second door will get unlocked you will say oh, sir why like this suppose if any person any person who is following in unauthorized way he want to get into the premises behind you walking behind you which is known as piggybacking when anyone walks slowly slowly uh, uh, after another person and he want to enter into a premises so understand he can get into the premises but he will not able to exit the premises why he will not able to exit the premises because as we are entering into the premises all the doors are getting locked so first door will get locked then second door will get unlocked then second door will get locked first then third door will get unlocked so anyone who want to enter in our premises in unauthorized way he can only enter the premises but he will not able to exit the premises look at it very carefully here the first entry door must close and lock for the second door to open with only one person permitted to enter so this will reduce the risk of piggybacking where any unauthorized person follows an authorized person through the secured entry okay understood 
so this was practically there in that video when that fat person security officer was entering into the server room so first glass door opened then he entered into that particular area then glass door closed and then after verification second door unlocked okay next non exposure of sensitive facilities now the meaning of this point is damn simple you should not have look 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 at the video very well you should not have exclusive sign like this on the wall you should not have exclusively sign like this server room server room server room if you have such kind of signs on the walls you want a person who doesn't belongs to your organization or who are not authorized person to enter to some sensitive area can follow these directions and he will reach to the secure area so non exposure of sensitive facilities such kind of arrows or signs should not be there on the wall please underline there should be no explicit indication hinting the presence of facilities such as computer rooms okay then computer terminal locks it is basically a security where no one can uh, take the computers from the office your computers your laptops will be locked with some kind of securities if you have a uh, visited chroma um, reliance digital you have visited such kind of premises you just see that you cannot you know take away the cell phone that cell phone is always locked with another device and if you try to you know force you try to for you know uh, forcefully unlock then that sound will suddenly come alarm will start they are known as computer terminal locks you just visit any chroma center or reliance digital whenever the lockdown will get over and you will see that all the phones which they have kept for display for the you know verification of the users it is always locked with another tool and the spring wire will be there so if you, if you forcefully try to unlock it immediately alarm will be triggered okay then next control single entry point understand this very well suppose in your building there are for to enter in your building if there are multiple ways around the building suppose there are six gate six different gates to enter in your premises then it is very dangerous because you cannot control all six gates you require full of securities then in that case and even after that there is a high chances that any one unauthorized person can enter in your premises premises because of such huge number of entrance so what this point is saying close all entrance point keep only one entrance point from where a person can enter and person can exit so when only one entrance point will be there it will be easy for us to monitor each and every person that is what they are talking about control single entry point okay and then alarm system just now i told you you have heard of uh, sensors you know in uh, where highly uh, i think jewelry shop or in some movies if they have some you know precise diamond or some jewelry so they have kept in a box and around that box that lasers will be there laser lasers and if someone try to get that diamond jewelry suddenly that alarm will start you have seen some mo in movies obviously you have seen in movies if you are a fond of hindi movies okay then dhoom 2 ritik roshan he was a thief and uh, before you know stealing all the stuff he always used to uh, monitor all the securities what are the different kinds of securities they uh, they have kept to protect that precise diamond or jewelry or crown if you have seen that movies then you will understand alarm system it will basically alarm alarm means informing the other people that something is going wrong look illegal entry can be avoided by linking alarm system to inactive entry point so as to avoid illegal entry okay so basically the sensors will be there so if someone try to enter from a door which is locked which is not used for entering into the premises still someone trying to enter from that door then that alarm will be triggered that sensors will force alarms and everyone will come to know that someone is trying to enter in our premises okay apart from that perimeter fencing i hope you have seen around the buildings if you have seen your building will be separated from another building by walls and above walls you will have find that metal shields so no one can cross that walls to enter into the another building so they are known as perimeter fencing okay 
then you should always understand very important thing if you are any of your employee every day if he go out of the company at a particular time and come again into the company at particular time for example every day 2 pm he leave the leaves the company and 4 pm he enters the company then there is a very high chances that he is actually giving our information to our competitors so such kind of employees should be monitored they are talking about this point control of out of our employee employee who are out of office for a longer duration during the office hours should be monitored carefully and finally secured report or document distribution card generally nowadays if you have observed uh, postman courier boy they are not allowed to enter into the building premises to drop the letters to the respected flats okay because of some of the security reasons so in big big societies you will find that there, there will be a letter box with the flat number so suppose if your building or society has a 100 flats then there will be 100 flats along with the flat numbers with the each mailbox understood and courier boy or postman just drop the post in that box respected flat number and whenever flat owners will you know move from that area he will just unlock with his keys he will take the post and he will lock it now such kind of facility will also be in commercial buildings ha huh. every office will have their own mailbox at the basement of the building area so any documents courier service or postman will just drop that drop post into that drop box understood and the require uh, whoever the authorized person will come and lock the drop box and then take their post that is what the example of document distribution card okay so unauthorized person even courier boy postman anyone will not be able to enter into the building premises by keeping all this mail boxes in the basement area only okay so here we are going to finish with the physical access control but when we talk about the next part logical access control so what we have discussed logical access control means we need to protect from technical human beings technical manushya always remember whenever we think of the security we should always start from our own employees right now in this lockdown period i hope you know that ramayan again started correct ramayan ram bhagwan ravan again started so there is a very uh, famous phrase is there if you know ram bhagwan was able to conquer lanka and defeat ravan the one of the biggest secret or reason was brother of ravan brother of ravan vibhushan he informed each and every details about the lanka about the ravan to ram bhagwan correct because he was knowing each and every details of lanka and he was belongs to lanka so from that day onwards there is a very famous phrase is there okay your own people your own people will inform about your family your organizations to others and they will be the reasons to for your defeats your own people will be the reason for your defeats the phrase is something like this ghar ka bhedi lanka dhai so it is basically in hindi i am saying okay I, i hope there are so many people who will not able to understand hindi but this is what the phrase ghar ka bedi lanka dhai so they are talking about the vibhushan the brother of ravan okay so our employees are also known as vibhushan you understand if any competitor want our information obviously he is going to contact our employee first understand this concept so you need to understand whenever we think of security we should always think from first from our own users point of view look competitors are visible we know that these 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 are competitors but if you have a thousands of employees then how will you come to know who which employee is going to leak any information from the company to your competitors i hope you are understanding what i'm saying so that's why 
we need to understand when a technical sound person which means we are talking about our employees our technical staff is personnel information system personnel so we need to define any authorized employees should not access if if we are told you at the time of database we should keep our rules we should give power as per the designation if clerk is there then less power will be there if manager is there high power will be there so always based on the designation of the employees you should define the power what is his requirements to fulfill his duties only that much power is given always you should you know write down you should specify which employee got what powers for what reasons till when he can use such powers everything should be fixed now when i talk about logical access control so we need to set controls at application level operating system level boundary levels network levels there are we need to set encryption uh, models to protect our data so it should not get leaked from our organization okay so please underline these are the controls relating to logical access to information resources such as operating system control application con software boundary controls networking controls access to database objects encryption controls etc okay logical access controls are implemented to ensure that access to system data and programs look even if underline is not there still i'm reading for your knowledge okay logical access controls are implemented to ensure that access to system data and programs is restricted to authorized users so as to safeguard information against unauthorized use disclosure or modification damage or loss logical access control designate who is supposed to have access to a specific system resources and what time of type of transaction and functions are permitted on that system in all the big corporate companies all the big corporate companies every employees every employees will have their separate username and password then what they can access will be defined based on their designation their requirements so no employee can access more than that more than his or her designation okay so this was the background but logical access control is little bit big topic as compared to environmental control and physical access control if you have observed in environmental control and physical access control we have directly discussed about controls different type of controls in each category but in logical access control first they will explain us what are the different ways or methods through which anyone our our employee or computers can compromise our information security can leak our information that is the first time second they will explain us who are those people what are the different people who, what are the different categories of people who can have access to who will attack on our system basically and then third part will be controls okay third part will be controls so first we need to start what are the different ways through which these people or competitors can compromise our security so see on the screen technical exposure okay so now we'll start with first technical exposures now look at very carefully okay one one point first bomb now look understand first of all student always have confusions they think that everything is virus wrong virus spyware malware adware trojan horse worms uh, right now bomb all are different but their concept is similar look at the first line bomb is a piece of bad code deliberately planted by insider or supplier of the program the bomb explodes when the conditions get fulfilled thereby causing the damage all are this whatever the different categories i have explained all are bad codes they are basically code coding language okay but their coding language drafted their intentions are bad which means to damage but every aspect has a different way of damaging and different way of coding okay so please understand all are different but their concept which means 
concept is what destruction that is same they are going to destruct one or another thing okay they may steal your information they may corrupt your data they may delete your data they may lock your data right now a new threat is going on ransomware ransom ransom uh, we know this underworld mafia they ask ransom money protection money but nowadays a uh, smart manushya technical manushya they will lock your data and to unlock your data they will demand ransom from you so such kind of threats are known as ransomware okay so let it be but i just want to clarify you that all are different the concept is same destruction but they destruct in different different ways okay so first was bomb the second is coming salami technique and then third will be rounding down okay so what i want first just underline salami technique and then i'm going to explain you what is the difference between salami and rounding down okay so please underline this involves slicing of small amount of money from computerized transactions they have given the example also but i will explain you with my example simple okay now basically rounding we do for what fractions okay now if you think from the maths point of view then point 37 will be rounded to point 40 as per maths point 37 will be rounded to 40 point 40 correct but people use this technique round off technique do you understand in a negative way so you can see instead instead of going 0.40 they went to 0.35 lower side not on the higher side 0.37 should rounded to 0.40 but here rounding was done to the lower side and that's why it is called rounding down rounding down so rounded we have done the rounding but on the lower side okay and then when i talk about salami when i talk about salami it means slicing slice okay yahan pe either here slice means cut okay so understand there are again two methods in first in first you just simply irrespect your what is after 3 okay what is after 3 you just slice it like this you can see the border so it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 in respect when things slice it so the rounding will be 0.30 move move it just cut it the other way total round off which means slice from the fraction only so 0 0 so this is what known as salami either last digit will be rounded or the whole fraction will be rounded okay so please copy this diagram for your reference salami and rounding down in rounding down you can see 0.37 to 35 okay lower side rounding but if you talk about salami there is no rule apply just slice it and what are the uh, uh, number will come put it so in 0.37 slice it so 0.30 or whole number will be converted into 00 okay now i just want some people always ask me okay what it will make a difference so i'm just giving you a very simple example of bank in 90s 90 90s 20 years back i'm talking about computers were just introduced in india 95 after 95 people started using computers in india properly properly okay slowly slowly late 90s and early 2000s banks started using computers for managing the transactions that time there was a small mistake in the software of the bank they now look i don't know it was a mistake or intentional we don't know right now but what it used to do suppose if bank want to provide you interest bank want to provide you interest then they used to round off interest in lower side same like what we have seen if 0.37 then they will make it to 35 okay and if they want to take interest from you then they used to convert to the higher side which means 0.37 to 40 so if bank want to pay you suppose if suppose bank has to pay you 
then they will put it on a lower side and if they want to take it from you then they used to put higher side now when i talk about late 90s there was a value to the fraction which means paisa so just understand at that moment that time there are so many accounts so many number of transactions and every time converting that money to the lower side will save lot of money to the bank which will be a profit for the bank 0.37 should get converted to 0.40 but bank used to convert to the 0.35 so there is a profit of 5 paisa i know that there will be many people who will under who will feel confusion oh 0.37 to 0.35 how 5 paisa think like this you should get 0.40 suppose if the amount is 0.37 then you should get you should get 0.40 but how much you are getting 0.35 so that difference is counted 5 paisa so bank earned like anything but then someone filed a petition in the high court then bank uh, high court told bank to rectify the software but damage has been done that till that bank on nobody was there to claim the money and people always think it doesn't make difference to us we never count fractions right now nowadays fraction doesn't have a value in our salary so based on that i'm giving you another example in us there was a company okay whose employee has done some amazing thing look it was a wrong but i'm just explaining you suppose my salary is 1 lakh rupees okay and 10 paisa do you think i'm i, I will care about 10 paisa obviously i'm going to focus on what 1 lakh rupees correct so what he has done in that us look i'm talking about us which means this will be sent okay over there in uh, financial amounts it is not rupees and paisa it is dollar and cent there was approximately 18000 employees working in that company so he hacked their salary file understand which is known as payroll payroll salary file okay and he modified the code what modification he has done he has converted all this fraction to 00 he has converted all this fraction to 00 so whoever the suppose 15 cent or 20 cent but here now it will be 00 and all this amount he has shifted to his own salary i hope you understood the concept what i said what coding he has done he converted everyone's salary everyone's salary into the full figure which means he has removed the fraction So suppose if my salary is one thousand dollar and ten cent, understand? Another example, one thousand dollar and ten cent. So he converted only one thousand dollar. He removed that ten cent and he converted that ten cent into zero zero. And all that cent he has added to his own salary. So understand? Eighteen thousand employees were working. Fraction of eighteen salary. Fraction of eighteen thousand person's salary. 10 pesos or 15 sorry 10 cent or 15 cent will come to the his account so every month he used to get 2000 approx approx 2000 to 2500 dollar in his account people also do such kind of frauds understand okay so please don't think we are auditors and we search we find such kind of frauds we don't involve ourselves in such kind of frauds okay ha huh. we are this side we need to uncover the frauds okay we should not cover the frauds now so please underline rounding down <clears throat> okay then trap door <clears throat> now understand trap door means what okay again i am giving you example only from the education point of view i know that all of you who are watching me right now okay at some point of time they have heard of pawn sites okay or visited pawn sites i just want to tell you one very important thing understand 
if any hacker want to hack your system so any hacker will be able to hack your system only if he knows your ip address ip address is the address of your computer if he know your ip address then only he will be able to enter in your system or hack your system because if you don't know someone's address how will you reach there now hacker doesn't know ip address of everyone correct so he tricks maximum pawn sites are created by hackers only maximum pawn sites are created by hackers so when you visit the site which means you are giving your own address to them this is my address please come to me and they will then follow your ip address and then they will enter in your computers and they will change or modify the logics in your computers and you don't know even what they are doing that is what called trap door you have given your own address to them and now they are entering into your system they come into existence from authorized program and allow insertion of specific logic or unauthorized logic so they may modify some logic or they add some unauthorized logic to your system so you have given address to your home okay that is what con that concept is known as trap doors so many examples are there okay but this was only for education point of view so i know that uh, some people will ask me later on believe me in classroom people actually ask me sir is any kind of solution that hacker by doing this activity hacker should not get our ip address so relax i'm just giving you that help before connecting such kind of websites you should use vpn virtual private network software okay if you search in your app store iphone or play store in your android you will get multiple vpn software virtual private network okay so before connecting anything you uh, open your vpn software vpn software will mask your ip address they will hide your ip address and then you can access any of the things and they will not able to get your ip address okay so don't worry i am giving, going to give you solutions to you also from this medium okay relax next data diddling now what is data diddling look systems understand this concept okay even if you have a two lines only but some concepts are very deep concepts systems are not humans understand okay once i pass the entry into the system look at my thing very carefully once i pass entry into the system and after me if someone modify that transaction then system will be able to trace it okay what was the original amount and then what was the modified amount look at the way i am explaining you okay when i enter the data into the system and the system recorded that entry and then after me someone else came any of my employee came and they modified the transaction which i have passed they have modified the amount then system has a controls inbuilt log remember log files and system will tell me the original amount was 5000 modified amount is 2500 who modified their name will be written in that okay but but before entering the data if i modify the data before entering only suppose i should i received 10000 from my clients I'm one of the employee of the company. I received 10,000 rupees from the client, but I'm passing the entry of only 5,000 rupees. That client has paid 5,000 rupees. Then in this case, understand in this case, system will not able to find out what was the original amount because I have passed the entry with 5,000 only. So when you modify the data before entering, then system is not able to trace the original amount. This is actually something called limitation of system. And because of this, there are employees who modified the actual transition amount when they are entering the data into the system. And because of this, our audit says, okay, whenever you see any transaction, try to verify that transaction with the original documents like purchase invoice, sales invoice, receipt notes, payments, 
verify with the physical documents that the transaction amount which is given in the document and the transaction amount which is entered into the system whether they are matching or not okay so i have also explained you from the audit perspective what is the importance of data didney worms now worms are the uh, again bad code which enters into your system and try to multiply itself but the problem is worms never hide behind any program so you can search all the worms so if if you have a proper antivirus and just click it on scan now i know someone will ask me also okay, if you have antivirus how the worms got into your system there are many ways and believe me you only are the reason how despite antivirus some virus or worms or trojan horse entered into your system now you just are how how it is possible simple when you use pen drive of your friend when you plug it in your laptop pen drive immediately your antivirus will start to scan it but if it will take time what will you do you cancel that scan so antivirus is trying to scan the pen drive and you are canceling it then which means you are only responsible for entering that worms into your system understood so worms despite antivirus if it enter into your system then what is the solution you put it your entire system on scanning and because worms are independent program they never hide behind any program it will uh, you know antivirus is able to detect all the worms together and they will remove it from the system also obviously the purpose of worm is also destruction copying the data corrupting the data okay same purpose please underline worm program replicate very fast because it copied itself to the other machines on the network since worms are stand alone programs independent programs i said they are they can be detected easily and after that you will get christmas card one of the fantastic trojan horse trojan horse is one of the most dangerous threat we have okay so first of all use the red pen to underline this okay mcq you should understand christmas card is an example of trojan now when i say christmas card which means you can understand such kind of trojan have has been or would have been emerged in the christmas season only now this they are they are talking about again 90s okay so at that moment of time there was no cell phone to say merry christmas merry christmas no whatsapp no uh, messenger was there so people used to send email to each other okay they used to wish each other through the emails merry christmas now this was founded again use your red pen in ibm company again red pen please and mcq write down i have written okay here also again you should remember okay what was the origin of uh, christmas card it was a ibm machine so if you going to write merry christmas you know to send uh, in uh, this a christmas card to your friend and you are going to like suppose for example you are, you are working on something and suddenly you thought okay i should reply to someone's merry christmas and you started writing merry christmas merry christmas on your uh, machine in your email system automatically it will converted that word merry christmas word which you are you were you are typing it will convert it into command yes it will convert into command nobody was doing all those things and immediately your screen will get locked and christmas tree will appear in in uh, in front of you on your screen and not only that on your screen it will also going to appear all the computers connected on that network now understand you sir what will happen only screen is coming now but that screen will not go only so you need to restart the system to work again but if you need to restart the work again so whatever work you have not saved is gone remember ram random access memory a temporary space to store your programs you are always working on ram when you are working when you are typing when you have not saved anything 
when you have not saved anything which means it is on the ram and if you need to restart ram is volatile memory to just understand the amount of loss they have faced at that moment of time when thousands and lakhs of computers of ibm hit with this trojan horse okay so please underline look right now it is not possible or any trojan horse or worms can do damage because now we are very very much equipped with good antivirus firewalls but right now the biggest threat the world is facing in terms of digital attack is ransomware it is also coming through email unknown link will come this is i'm only explaining you for your knowledge okay ransomware i'm explaining you right now ransomware, which is not in the syllabus but for your knowledge if you get any any email with a link inside that content that email and any link as a content and it, it is telling you to you know click to unlock that link please until unless you are not sure until unless you are sure or you are not sure about the origin of that message or whether that message is correct or not don't click it and delete it because if it is a ransomware and if you click that link immediately your data will be locked okay so understand this thing so this was only for the knowledge here we have finished the christmas card and next is spoofing right now i'm giving you i'm telling you all my students you need to do one thing okay you need to write again please this is just a joke take it spontane uh sportingly you just need to do like this you need to type one email to the president of india and in that you should write i will kill you and if you send such kind of email next day you will get free food new home free pickup and full body massage you will get next day i hope you understood the meaning is jail police will come cops will come and take you but how cops came to know you have sent that mail because of your ip address so you got caught then why hackers we are not able to trace it why we are not able to trace it hackers because they keep change their ip address and that technique is known as spoofing okay that technique is known as spoofing so there is a very uh, superb hindi bollywood movie bollywood okay a wednesday ha huh. it's a superb movie if you know little bit hindi or you know hindi then you should watch this movie a wednesday maybe a similar movie will be there in south or remake will be there but i don't know the name of that remake but this is what a bollywood movie a wednesday one of the superb movie spoofing and if you see hollywood movies hollywood movies so many hollywood movies okay so they also use this technique to hack someone else server okay so here we have finished with the first technical exposure now the another is concept is coming asynchronous attack now please underline first and then i will explain you what is asynchronous attack so i hope you have done tick mark okay now listen it very carefully okay so uh, simple question now right now you all are at home okay so apart from your studies you always surf on internet correct so suppose you are surfing facebook you are surfing facebook okay either through the application facebook application or through the browser can you tell me in how many seconds how many seconds the data will get loaded into your application or in your browser when you are accessing facebook when you use a facebook application or when you use facebook through the browser google chrome in how many seconds the data will get loaded the page will get loaded so you will say sir 5 uh, seconds sir or maybe maximum 10 seconds correct okay now tell me where is facebook server is it near by your building or the city in which you are living or the state in which you are living or in india no 
Facebook server is in California, which is in US. Now understand, I, I, I stay in Mumbai, okay? So from Mumbai to US, direct flight require 16 hours. It takes 16 hours, one, six, 16 hours to reach from Mumbai to California, direct flight. And you just understand that much distance, which means thousands of kilometers distance, the data which you are getting in your cell phone or in your laptop, in your browser, with maximum, you said 10 second. Same distance flight takes 16 hours and the data coming to you in 10 seconds and less than depending on the internet speed, less than 10 seconds. Now understand the speed at which internet is walking. The data is transferring from one point to another point. Look, this is what the uh, picture of internet. Can you see this diagram very well? If you see this diagram very well, see, this is what actually internet network of network all the cables are connected with each other around the states around the con uh, countries between the countries and can you see the small small just see just a second okay i'm just uh, showing you this a small small point which are sparkling can you see this small small points huh. these are exchange points where data will get exchanged it's something like a traffic signal from one route you are going to another route you're taking left you're taking right that junction now when the data is when the data is transferred at such a high speed it will be difficult for hacker also to hack the data to intercept the data because till he will think of you know intercepting the data the data will travel away so what he will do so what he will do, he try to create traffics on these junctions, on these points, okay, whatever points you can see now, here in this area. So what will happen when the traffic will be created, the movement of the data will be get slow. And once the data movement will get slow, he will intercept the data easily. Now this is one of the technique of asynchronous attack. Look at the explanation. They occur in many environment where data are moved over telecommunication lines data that are waiting to be transmitted are liable to unauthorized access called asynchronous attack now in your study material use paragraph is given little bit complicated definition is given i have modified this definition little bit so that you can easily understand data which is transferred over the network hackers always try to intercept those data by creating the traffics and they use multiple techniques okay to intercept the data but that attacks are known as asynchronous attack. Now there are four different techniques. The first is piggybacking. Please underline first. This involves intercepting between operating system and the user and then modifying them or substituting the message. I will explain you with the diagram. Don't worry. Okay, what is this, this, this line says? Okay. What is piggybacking means? Look, sender want to send data to receiver. So sender is sending message to the receiver, but what will, what will happen? Hacker will intercept this message in between the transmission, and then it will modify that message and send it to receiver. Now the message which is received by the receiver is not the original message, which is sent by, which was sent by sender. It got modified in between by the hacker and this technique is known as piggybacking intercepting the message in between modifying the message and again send back to the receiver so receiver will not get the original message this technique is known as piggybacking okay so please draw this diagram for your reference so I hope you know that pause draw and then proceed okay next is data leakage this is done by your own employees they leak the data using the different methods look you can see they uh, leak the information out of computers through dumping files to paper can you see this 
dumping files to paper it means print out dumping files to paper means print out or steaming computer reports and tapes which means just write down pen drive hard disk pen drive hard disk okay and then you will get wiretapping wiretapping is nothing but listening to the communication between two people you can see spying on information being transmitted over telecommunication network here also you can should write mcq okay spying so when two people are talking with each other in between you are listening their conversations they are known as wiretapping you must have seen in movies okay police try to you know find out the uh, conversation between two villains or one uh, employee of the villain and between villain they are talking and police is listening in between they are known as wire tapping okay so you can just see this and uh, in look when i take lectures in mumbai or in the north side then there is a movie called rais it is a sharuf khan movie i hope you, are, you must know sharuf khan <clears throat> okay sharuf khan is one of the one was uh, not i will say right now but he was uh, one of the one of the top star of the bollywood and one of the his movies is rais movie okay but let it be right now just cut it off because you may not know this movie also here i already give you an example police people listen the conversations between two people that is what the example of wire tapping okay and subversive threat is also same as piggybacking yes piggy banking and subversive threat same you can see the same concept but then you will say sir then why they have kept this two different topic when the concept is same look when the concept is same that doesn't mean their methods will be same piggy banking and subversive will differ in terms of methods in terms of understanding in terms of concept they are same what intercepting the data in between the transmission modifying the data and then put it back into the transmission but the technique they use will differ piggy banking will use a different method subversive threat will use a different method okay clear so don't worry relax so here we have completed the first part of logical access control what was the first part different methods through which anyone can modify or leak your information now second part will come in front of you who all who, who are all people who will do these things you can see logical access violators require more technical and so uh, there was some technical fault in the video so we'll continue with this thing okay so logical access violators are nothing but the people who are going to attack on your systems okay now you can see the first is hacker hackers and cracker there are two different word people will always get confused between hackers and crackers okay understand now hackers are those people who are uh, you know very egoistic people they have very enthusiastic people they want to show their knowledge to the world do you understand they want to show their knowledge to the world so if some company will say you know our security is best then this hacker feel offended they think that you know company is challenging them and these people then try to uh, breach their securities to show their knowledge talent you can see hacker try their best to overcome restrictions to prove their ability ethical hackers most likely never try to misuse the power computer intentionally with the, the power they have to hack the system but crackers are again same people technically sound like this hackers but their intentions will be always wrong this is what the difference between hacker and cracker okay then you will find the next point employees which is we know that is personal information system personal they have easy access to computerized information while discharging their duties so segregation of duties and supervision can help to reduce the logical access violations 
former employees more dangerous because now they don't work with the company and if they left the company on unfavorable terms then they are more dangerous because they can uh, obviously leak there are so many information they know and they can give it that information to the competitors okay and then there are number of people interested or educated outsiders competitors foreigners organized criminals crackers part-time and temporary personals etc etc so these are the people who try to misuse or try to attack or try to use different techniques to leak our information okay and now we are moving towards the third part controls okay so now we want to protect our resources now how will we protect our resources damn simple first first i told you you should always start with your own employees user access management four points are there first user registration you should have all the information about the uh, your users what power has given to the users why that power has given till what time that power will be there all the information should get registered that is the first point user registration okay please underline second privilege management i told you no user will get more power than the job responsibilities job requirements see the line also okay third you need to train your employees you need to educate your employees for the password you should tell your employees you should train you can give education to them how the password should be constructed okay look passwords are usually used for access to system educating user is a critical component about the password and making them responsible for their password you should tell them that the password should be combination of alphabets numbers special characters it should a key you should have a minimum length okay you should keep a password in such a way that you can easily remember also and it will be strong also so such kind of training will be given to the employees and the last most important once you have given power to your employees you should not think that now forget it employees will work no after fixed time maybe six months one year you should review the powers and you should make sure that okay the requirements of the users is again should be at par par with the powers if the requirements increases you should increase the power if requirement decreases you should reduce the power that is what known as review of user access rights okay so four points we have completed second understand however security you will set okay but ultimately user he should follow all the instructions okay so you can see the next part user responsibilities first we taught them we train them now it is their responsibilities to create strong passwords and second user should always make sure that i'm just giving you a small example okay on this unattended user equipment suppose mr x okay he was working on the project in his cube I hope you know that in offices we have all cube cubics are given to each employee okay he was working on some very important project suddenly he got the call hello hi how are you and the call was from the near one dear one lovely one just understand so he just you know started talking with her and while talking he got so much involved he just got up from the chair and he moved from the cube his cubic he went to the outside of the office in the passage area and he was walking there he was talking there but he left his computer open now mr y just passed from his computer which whose computer mr x computer and he have seen computer is open and he tried to see the information he tried he got some good information from that particular project and he immediately went now mr y gave that information to competitor but whose name will come mr x because he was responsible for his own project so what they are saying user should ensure that 
none of the equipment under their responsibility is ever left unprotected suppose if i got call and i need to go out to talk simply you should just log off the computer you just start a screen server so no one can able to see what you are doing on your equipment understood okay so please underline okay so now we'll go for the next topic network access control now right now all the companies are going to give a service to their employees that they can work from home they can access the data companies data from anywhere but understand for giving this facility to employees your server need to come online yes or no but look when you will come online when your employees can access your data online there is a threat even hackers can access your data from the network they can hack your server there is a chance so i always told you that whenever you are going to use the technology remember saket modi we are living in a technical world and all the threats are around us around us but then it doesn't mean that we should stop using the technology correct so what we will do we will set the controls for the risk so whatever risk we will face we will set the controls an internet connection exposes and organizations to the entire world so this will benefit as well as harm the organization correct definitely so what we will do we will put the securities look at the first security policy on use of network services so whenever any employee try to access the services online he will be able to access only those services which are required to fulfill his job requirements just see that selection of appropriate services and approval to access them in line with business requirements will be the part of the policy so he will get only approval for those services which is required for to uh, perform his duties okay that is what the first security we have placed second enforce path now understand if you remember physical access control just in today's lecture only we have done physical access control i told you that okay suppose to enter into your organization if you have multiple ways there are six i, I uh, took the example of okay, into enter into the uh, business buildings or office premises we have a six ways then it will be difficult to control all six ways correct so what we have what we have implemented over there we will close all five gates and we will keep only one gate open and from that gate we can monitor easily who came and who went from the company or inside the company and or outside the company correct same concept belongs here also okay whenever our company will come online and it will use internet to exchange the data then there should be only one path and force path means there has to be only one path which is a path through which every employees will send their data and receive their data and that path their path that connection should be monitored through security and that security is known as firewall okay so please look at the example very well based on risk assessment it is necessary to specify the exact path or route connecting to the network for example internet access by all employees should be routed through firewall so uh, all employees should not use different different routes they should all use single route and that route should be monitored by firewall now what is firewall after two or three topic you will get the definition of firewall don't worry i will explain you that time what is firewall next segregation of networks now here please star mark we will replace this explanation with a simple explanation and look at your book top side if you have a space or bottom side you have a space do star mark over there and start writing over there i'm giving you a simple explanation for segregation of network okay so please start writing based on sensitive information based on sensitive information organization 
based on sensitive information organization can segregate organization can segregate their network from internet organization can segregate their network from internet by creating by creating look at the name on the screen by creating vpn by creating vpn in the bracket write down virtual private network bracket open write down virtual private network full stop then again continue in that example again bracket is open now huh? in bracket you should you need to write virtual private network then full stop it was a full form then write example intranet and extranet and bracket close and i hope you know intranet and extranet remember first lecture so this was the definition for segregation of networks so remember we told you that all oh, on internet we will create intranet a secure network so others cannot access our information and between organization we create extranet mm, the same definition will come use here okay now security of network services no employee can access any network services without username and password authentication and authorization policy so just next to this authentication write down username and password you need to enter then only you can access any of the services and it's absolutely correct also now basically firewall is nothing but a wall a barrier barrier between your organization and internet okay so i'm just drawing small diagram so you can little bit uh, you can get explain underline a uh, little understanding of the question okay just a second a rough idea okay suppose these are the boundaries of your organization okay these are the entrance point to enter into organization this is internet okay this is organization o means organization i for internet so whenever any data will come from internet okay whenever any data will come from internet it needs to enter into the organization correct and to enter into the organization you will use what door a simple explanation don't get complicated so this is the entrance point okay where i have written e it is the entrance point and here we will implement firewall at the entrance point so firewall is a ba barrier between your internet and organization so if the data which is coming from internet okay if the data which is coming from internet is not appropriate then firewall will not let them to enter into your organization they are same like a security guard security guard will scan each and every person if they feel that this person who want to enter into the organization is unauthorized they will immediately remove that person and they will not allow that person to enter into your organization so firewall is a security guard only but here we are talking in terms of network so over network firewall will not allow any unauthorized traffic to enter into your organization okay 
then we'll go for encryption now encryption is nothing but a language a method through which you can securely communicate with the other person basically what will you do you will not send your message in a normal language you will convert your message into such a language which will not be understood by someone else a very simple example i can give is whenever i visit chennai or bangalore okay so obviously i am a gujarati person i hope you understood and i don't know kannadaka which means kannad language or the language which they speak in bangalore or same thing tamil language in tamil nadu so and this is just an example okay this is just for the fun so when two person suppose if i am in chennai and two person they want to talk in such a language i should not understand they always start speaking in tamil and for me it is something called encryption and decryption going on look generally i have observed this thing okay even over there when i go to the staff hotel staff because generally we stay in the hotel so normally they talk in english so when they talk in english obviously we will able to understand but when they want to talk in such a way which or some uh, another stuff which we should not understand they will start speaking in tamil and for me overhead everything goes overhead so encryption is nothing but a way through which two people can secretly communicate chat with each other and no third person will be able to understand what they are exchanging okay so please underline what is encryption i i really want to learn tamil language maybe uh, one day i will able to speak some of the few words and then last point callback device now please underline first and then there is a small diagram for callback devices okay the callback device requires users to enter password and if authorized then callback device establish a new connection okay thus obviously it prevents an intruder who pretends a legitimate user now through diagram you will understand everything relax now just see the diagram very well okay now understand that okay this picture belongs to me okay i am 10 years back i also used to like uh, look like this handsome now after 10 years obviously i am looking right now what you can look uh, see me okay so if and obviously the person who can see here you understood this is a hacker if hacker got my username and password somehow he was a, he was able to get my username and password and obviously you know that once anyone can get your username and password they will able to log in in your account correct using your username and password so look that hacker is actually getting in in my account by entering my user id and password but nowadays servers are smart servers are smart once server will get the request to enter in the account user id and password server will ask another question enter otp this is something called callback server is you know sending another request to enter the otp and then only you will get access but as you know that otp will come to my device my registered device correct so that hacker won't be able to log in in my account because he doesn't have otp and i hope you must have used this system in gmail in gmail google mail we have two step verification process once you enter your username and password and then google will send you the otp on your registered device and once that otp will be entered then only you can log in correct callback device is the same concept this callback device is the same concept okay so please draw this diagram okay so uh, you know that pause and complete so here today we are 
stopping our lecture because after this operating system is also a big topic then application it is also a big topic with the many more concepts so all those concepts we will cover in the next session okay so thank you very much